This video introduces you to the database of substances of concern and products, also known as the SCIP database. You can access SCIP from the ECHA home page, the search pages, the information on chemicals page, and the SCIP section of the website. I will give you a demo of the database, walk you through the user portal, and give you an overview of the key features. I will also show some of the search possibilities and how the results representing notified articles will be displayed. Let's first go to the database portal. Here it is. When the database portal opens, first you will be in the Articles Notified tab. It will present a randomized set of data. The reason for this is to not always show the same results, which would be the case if we would use, for example, alphabetical ordering. The portal has an About tab, which introduces the database and gives links to more information. The key part of the portal is the Articles Notified tab. Let's return there. Here, you will see the full list of notified articles along with some useful icons. First is the search, which I will explain later. There is also the possibility to submit a question or give feedback via our contact forms. And there's an integrated help system with more details on what the database contains, how to search, how the data is presented, what the different fields and options mean, and the type of information that notifiers can make available. So let's look at what the portal presents to you in the Articles Notified tab. In the results, you can see the mandatory notified article name along with any other optional identifiers that have been provided by the notifier. These can include, for example, barcode, catalog or item numbers, EAN codes, ISBN numbers, part numbers, brand names, and so on. Each article will show their category, designed to help you identify the function or use of the article using a harmonized list based on the TAREC list. The TAREC list incorporates the EU Combined Nomenclature, or CN, code system. You will see the TAREC code number and the related description text. The article category lets you identify in brief what the article is or is used for, especially if the article name is unhelpful. You can also see the date on which each article was last updated by the notifier. Lastly, the eye icon lets you browse article notification details. Now, as you will see above the results bar, well over 4 million articles have been notified to ECHA. So the search is key to help you find the articles that interest you. If you click on the search icon, the search features expand. You can see we have five logical blocks of search filters. First, of course, is the search by article identity. In the current version of the portal, we have enabled up to five identifier search fields. You are free to use as many or as few of these as you wish. For example, product B and model C. With these fields, you can search by article name or other identifier. The search accepts full or partial identifiers. The search will also try to match your search strings against the most relevant available identifiers and the results will be ranked by the quality of the matches. Considering, for example, exact matches first, then starts with, and then contains, and so on. Bear in mind that many identifier types, including brand name, are optional. If some identifier types have not been notified to ECHA, they naturally cannot be found by the identifier search. The second key search block covers the article category. As mentioned, article categories are defined by the TAREC list, which incorporates the combined nomenclature CN code system. 
Since there are around 20,000 codes, we implemented a new feature, the pre-search. For example, you're interested in an article categories relating to circuit boards. Enter a text string and click on the pre-search button. It's important to click on the search button included in the pre-search area to trigger the pre-search. Using the enter key, the system will trigger the main search. Now see how the pre-search returns all article categories highlighted where the description contains your text string. Then you can select as many or as few article categories as you wish. When you have selected the article categories, you are free to launch the actual article search by clicking the Enter key. The result will be any articles relating to at least one of the selected categories of interest. The third search block covers the material and mixture category. With this block, you can search for articles based on the material and mixture in which a candidate list substance is embedded or integrated. For example, the material categories include ceramic, glass, leather, tiles, metals, and so on. The mixture categories include chemical products such as adhesives, sealants, colorants, and inks that contain the substance of very high concern in the article. Again, because these pick lists are quite long, we have a similar pre-search to help you make your choice. By entering a text string, you can find any matching material or mixture categories. And again, you can select one or more material and or mixture categories of interest. Once selected, you can launch the actual article search by clicking the Enter key to find any articles which match any of your already selected search criteria. Note that after every search, the results table will always show why each article has been returned. Matches on article identifier or category are not highlighted since these are always shown in the results table by default. Search result matches by other filter criteria will be highlighted as shown here, indicating exactly why each article has been returned by the search. The next search block covers the substance of concern. The SCIP database contains details of all notified articles which contain one or more substances of very high concern on the candidate list. This means that every single article in the database contains or will have previously contained at least one candidate list substance. Since articles can evolve over time, you might even find articles which are now safer but whose earlier versions contained a candidate list substance. There are 219 candidate list entries covering an identified 435 substances as of the time of this recording. So, as with the other search blocks, there is a pre-search. You can either search by full or partial candidate list substance names and find any matching substances. Once more, you can select as many substances as you wish. You can also refine your search to look for candidate list substances that are no longer present. Once you have chosen your substance of interest, you can search to find any articles that contain at least one of the selected substances. As before, you can see that the articles returned by the search are highlighted. Finally, in the last search block, you have the possibility to search by the substance concern, the reason it was included in the candidate list. Reasons for inclusion are, for example, being carcinogenic, mutagenic, toxic to reproduction, hazardous to human health or the environment, endocrine disrupting, persistent, bioaccumulative, and toxic properties, and so on. As usual, you can select as many reasons for inclusions as you wish. And when searching, you will find articles containing at least one candidate list substance with at least one of your selected concerns. All search filters across all the blocks can be combined. For example, you can search by article identifier 
and article category, and substance of concern, and any other search filters. Within the same search block, the filters are combined with OR logic, meaning that results will match any of the filters. Between the different search blocks, the combination is with AND logic, meaning that results will match the filters of the first block and the second, and so on. The more search filters you include, the fewer results you're likely to get. Let's look at some of the data that can be provided. Opening an example at random, this is a vehicle, so perhaps it's quite complex. In the results table, there is a details eye icon. Clicking it opens the full fact sheet for that article that shows the data provided in the latest received submission. The fact sheet header starts with the article name, along with any other identifiers that have been provided. There is also a summary giving the full list of all candidate list substances present in the article. So yes, this example is indeed a truck, and it looks like it contains quite many candidate list substances. In the main area of the fact sheet, you will see on the left a hierarchy menu, which gives the structure of the article as provided by the notifier. In this example, there is quite a complex hierarchy. For instance, the truck has a cab which has body coating, ceiling plugs, and valves. The lowest level component contains the candidate list substance at X percent weight by weight. At each level of the hierarchy, the details of the related component are presented. The component name, article category tariff code, an indication of whether it is made in the European Union, and any provided safe use instructions. You will always have this data if provided with the aim of being able to isolate exactly where in the notified article the candidate list substances are present and how to handle each component of the article safely. At the bottom of the hierarchy are the candidate list substances. On the substance details page, you will see the name and identifiers of the substance as presented in the candidate list itself. As standard, the substance name links to the substance info card page where you will find the full public summary of the data ECHA holds on that substance. There is also a link via the I icon directly to the specific candidate list entry relevant for the substance. Here, you can find details of the decision adding the substance to the list. Lastly, there's an indication of the material or mixture in which the candidate list substance is incorporated and an indication of the percentage weight by weight at which it is present. You can expand and explore the full hierarchy following each branch down to the candidate list substances which are present. If we take another example at random, you can see a much simpler article. For example, here's a suction cup. The hierarchy is extremely simple in this case, and the only candidate list substance present is lead. This illustrates some of the range of information that has been provided so far. So this is the initial SCIP database portal. We do plan to improve it gradually as time goes on, and notifiers are free to update and refine their notifications at any time. The portal will always update to show the latest submitted data for each notified article. And this concludes our SCIP database demo. More information about SCIP can be found on our website at eka.europa.eu forward slash SCIP. If you have any questions or need support, contact us at eka.europa.eu forward slash contact.